Cool. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, it's kind of amazing that we're all connecting, you know, on, on these video tools. I was, um, as I'm watching all the, you know, I'm sitting in the green room and seeing all the little windows. I was like having flashbacks of see you see me in the, in, in the mid nineties. And as we lost the last speaker for a second, I was thinking about, you know, the times when, um, we had thought the internet wouldn't support streaming video, that the whole thing was going to fall over in kind of uh, 2001, 2002. I think AT&T was telling the world that, that the internet couldn't possibly stream video, but look at us. So um, we don't have that much time and I want to take some questions at the end. So I'm going to tell you just a few things that I've learned um, during my tenure here at, at LVMH and hopefully you'll find them interesting and then and I'll, I'll try to save some time for your questions at, at the end. Um, you know, you, you, you heard my intro. Um, at, uh, for those who aren't familiar with LVMH, LVMH is uh, a holding company of, of luxury companies. So we have Louis Vuitton, Dior, um, Celine, and many others in the fashion space. Um, we also have uh, a number of perfumes and cosmetics brands, um, including the, the retailer Sephora. Um, we also have watches and jewelry, including uh, Tagur, uh, Hublot, um, and others, and uh, we have wine and spirits as well, including uh, Hennessy, Dom Perignon, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we're, we are, you know, think of us as kind of more than 70 countries, our companies who are in the luxury space. Um, and, you know, we have, we have, we, we serve customers uh, at the very high end, but the other thing to consider with that is that we have, um, you know, we have a, a very high level of customer service. We actually talk person to person um, to many of our customers. So I think that's that's the important thing when you consider the way that we look at the world and the way that that, that digital is, is shaping the world. Um, when, when uh, I'm gonna see if I can move, yes I can. Um, what, what, you know, what we've experienced in the luxury space on the e-commerce side, I mean, I think it would be fair to say that, that luxury was slow um, to adopt to digital ways of selling. Um, I think that created a lot of opportunities for other people in the space. I think if you look at the market cap of Farfetch as an example, that's an opportunity that was created by luxury companies being slow to the market. Um, you know, but, but over the past, I mean, really, if you look, look back at companies who are doing things in the very, you know, kind of earliest of times, um, it's been happening for 15 years, but certainly over the past five years, and you know, COVID has only accelerated that. There isn't a um, you know a, a, a supply problem with with these with these goods anymore. And I think what that does is it completely changes the landscape. So you know, you could look at you know, we, a marketplace is defined as suppressed supply and suppressed demand. So you know, the fact that our brands weren't selling online and customers wanted to buy online created an opportunity for. People like Farfetch, people like Net Porte, Matches Fashion, uh, My Teresa, et cetera. Right? But I think you know, once our brands are taking the um, exceptional shopping experience that they offer in stores online, you no longer have um, suppressed supply. And, and I, so I think that you, know, you need to look at that in terms of you know, how that will reshape the landscape. Um, also, supply isn't only about product, you know, so certainly it's about product availability. Can you buy the product that you want online or not, especially when you're looking at product categories, which are, which are not commodities and they are supply limited, whether that's, you know, fashion or, or our spirits brands, they are often supply limited, but it's also, uh, services, you know, our customers in many cases, uh, have more money than time. And if you're not offering the services that they need and desire online, then they're simply going to go somewhere else. So I think if you look at, you know, what what certainly what we have done at LVMH this year um, during 2020, during you know working from home, et cetera, we've we've been unlocking supply, supply of both product and services, and and that is uh, you know as they say you can't you won't you can't and won't put the toothpaste back in the tube, right? Um, once you once you uh, offer these services and consumers adopt these services, uh, they don't stop adopting them. You know, we, we, we know what click and collect has been. If you look at, say, the, the UK market for Marks and Spencer or John Lewis, you know, click and collect is, is, a, is, a, is a huge part of their business. More than half of their orders online are picked up in store. That hasn't been the case in many geographies. I mean, compare that to, say, uh, Tokyo, where you have, you know, very high 4G penetration, very high, um, you know, kind of uh, comfort with technology and buying online, but they don't have the same penetration of services like click and collect. Well, 
that's simply because they aren't offered. And once they get offered, uh, consumers will adopt them. You know, I think that I think we'll see that uh, across across categories. Um, the uh, I want to share one more thought just as a setup before I get to the topic of data um, that quickly, because I hope you'll find it interesting. I, I think in that reshaping of the landscape, the way to think about it is, you know, what are the customer needs? And we look at the customer needs as discovery, you know, so kind of falling in love, uh, you know, building desire. Um, you know, if you think about looking at one of our brands on Instagram or YouTube, that's where that comes from. You know, you watch the, um, the show that Virgil Abloh and Louis Vuitton put on in Shanghai, uh, you know, back at the beginning of, of August. That's, that's a, a perfect example. Um, and then there's the find portion of that, which is like, I know I've fallen in love. I know what I want. Now I need to find it. And then there's, you know, the buy component of that. And, and I think the thing is, is that everyone will tell you, you know, if you think about every service, they're all going to tell you, oh, we're all three of those. We, uh, we help you discover, we help you find, and you can buy directly from us. And I'll be honest with you, I think that's the, pro that's the mistake that we made at Yahoo, where we couldn't decide if we were a vertical or a horizontal. And when you can't decide, you become none of the above. Um, so I think that, that you know, what, what, what I say is that everyone needs to be very clear about who they are in that. And they need to recognize that from the consumer perspective, the, the experience of discovering on Instagram, finding on Google, landing on a brand site, and then you know, buying with Apple Pay is, is great. It's, um, it's super convenient. You know, I would argue that if, you know, again, people are, are always asking me about Amazon and our brands, and my question is really simple, what value does Amazon add to that experience, right? I mean, there are many products for which Amazon adds a lot of a lot of value because you don't know where to get them, you don't trust who you're buying them from. But if you're buying a Celine handbag, you know, you're you, you've already followed Celine on Instagram, you know how to find Celine's website, you trust Celine's customer experience, you trust the the price. The price is the price. You're not going to find it cheaper somewhere else. And, uh, and, and, you, and they have Apple Pay, so it's super simple and you can check out without ever seeing the keyboard appear on your phone. So that, that's, you know, that, that's, I, I think, the, the thing to consider there. And as that, I think that you know, everyone online is one of a magazine, a search engine, or a brand. And I use those terms, those are coarse terms intentionally. You know, I think that the you know, question is, are you um, helping people discover? Are you, are you a comprehensive index of products and prices? Or are you that trusted brand that has a monopoly on yourself or your experience that, that, you, know, that, that you can buy from? Um, those, you know, you're one of those three things. And if you have an identity crisis about which of those three things you are, you're doomed, I promise you. Um, and I, you know, and, and with, without you know, naming names, there are, there are players in the space that, are, that, are, that, that fit that bill. Finally, the thing I'll say is, you know, we, we are still in this kind of pre um, end of wholesale uh, period, I would say, where, you know, in the, in the offline world, wholesale meant distribution. If, if I could use the wholesale channel to get my product to places in the world that I can't physically be, there's a ton of value in that for, for me and my brand. Online, there's a ton of danger in that because if all of those retailers are trying to compete online, they're only going to compete on price. And now my brand site has the higher price. I mean, there it's, it's a it's a slippery slope. So online, wholesale, or in many cases it'll be affiliate or you know type of relationship. It's really more about visibility. It's more about uh, building awareness. Um, I'm conscious of time, so I'm going to keep going. If you want to have more questions on that, uh, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I'll, I'll wrap up with with just a few words about data and how we think about 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 data. It, it's it's a because you know we are you know we really we are huge believers in the value of data to our business, but that's because we're we are believers in the value that that data can allow us to provide to our customers. Um, you know, I, I look at it as there's a spectrum, and on one end of the spectrum, you do nothing with data. On the other end of the spectrum, you do everything with data and you're creepy and you follow your users around the internet and, and, you know, make them feel uncomfortable as a result. In luxury, we're going to be closer to the, the do nothing end of the spectrum, but we're not going to do nothing, of course. You know, what I always say is that, you know, privacy and luxury are synonymous, but so are personalization and luxury. And customer relationships um, 
in our stores are, 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 built, are built on identity and trust. You know, if you walk into one of our stores, it's very likely that you have a relationship um, with a sales associate. They're going to offer you a glass of champagne. They might remember when your wedding anniversary is, you know, um, and, and that's, you know, that's part of the luxury experience. Um, and, and, you know, also uh, online, you know, being contacted at, you know, times you don't want to be about products you don't want that that's, that's not a luxury experience either. So using data, you know, to, uh, to do, you know, to do things that are about personalization for our customers, um, is, is paramount for us. Um, but also really taking security seriously, taking privacy seriously, um, and making sure that, you know, the guiding light for us when we, you know, there, are, there will always be opportunities for us to use customer data. And the guiding light for us is simply, A, would we tell the customer that we're doing this? Because if you wouldn't, if it's something that you would not disclose to the customer, don't do it. It's very, very, very simple. Um, you know, so that's the first question you ask yourself. And the second is, is there value to the customer in doing this? You know, I always use the example of, you know, I, I put my friend's birthdays in my calendar because I don't, I don't even know what day it is a lot of times, uh, you know, in terms of like, I couldn't tell you exactly what the date is today um, and or whose birthday it is. If it's not my calendar, it doesn't exist, right? I still, I'll send somebody a card. I, I send them a text message. I might call them on the phone. They aren't offended because that, memory came out of my database, right? As somebody once said quite well, the human brain is for having ideas, not storing them, right? So using, um, you know, using data, using artificial intelligence to be smarter and do our jobs better um, is not creepy. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's sensical and it's good for everyone at the end of the day. If the email that I get is more targeted to me, just to use a very simple example, um, you know, that, that provides a ton of value, uh, for me. We're, lo we're lo you're in luxury. You're looking at a business that's been based on human relationships and human instinct, um, you know, for hundreds of years. And, you know, if we can, if we can use, um, you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning to improve those relationships and improve the level of service that we, you know, provide to our customers, again, many of whom are more time poor than, than cash poor. Then, then we're doing our jobs.